Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Brandon and I still make videos. Today, I've got a bit of a hot topic for you guys. Does the creative industry pay enough in South Africa? But before we get into that, let's roll the intro, shall we? Before I get into anything, I just want to say that these are my personal thoughts and experiences with regards to the industry. Now, don't now take my words and think that this is what's happening everywhere with everybody. No, this is my experience and my thoughts. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, the creative industry in South Africa is probably the one in the entire world where it's the easiest to make it into. Because every single day the pool is just spreading and opening and opening up and everybody's ready to consume new content. Now, that makes it a very, very saturated industry and in turn can have a bit of a negative effect. It is definitely a lot more harder to stand out with so many creators joining the platforms, your Instagrams, your TikToks and whatever the likes. So standing out is becoming more harder than making it into the industry. A wise person recently on Twitter said, you don't need money to get into the industry. However, you need to spend money to stay in the industry. And I think that's where it gets the most difficult for everybody, especially if you're trying to stay in the game for the long run. Because you see, you could easily start making content with your phone. You could easily just borrow a camera from your friend and just start making videos. And that's gonna cost you next to nothing. Besides the crazy data costs in the country and whatever transport and whatever, those minimal costs, besides that, it's gonna cost you nothing. However, to stay in the industry, that's where it gets a bit tricky. Not even a bit, but a lot. Tricky a lot, nya. Young do. If you have Twitter language, you know. If you have Instagram, you know, shout out to Denga one time. Now, I, being a creative professional, I am constantly forced to spend money on this thing. Every other month, there's a new camera. Every other month, there's a new this, there's a new that. The Ronin broke, the camera broke, the lens broke, and, 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 and. The list just keeps going on and on and on. And you're just basically bleeding money. It would be cool if you make money bleed from my eyes. I don't know how possible that's going to be. If you see this, then they did it. If you don't see this, then... I'm sorry. The guys couldn't figure it out. What do I mean when I talk about bleeding money? Recently, our Ronin S2, which is a brand new model, by the way, malfunctioned. And we had to send it back all the way to Korea. Was it Japan? Japan is in Korea. But we had to send it out back to Japan for it to get fixed. It was gone for plus minus six weeks. Now, during that period, we had work that we had to do. What did we end up doing? We rented out a Ronin from one of the suppliers here. It was costing us a lot of money per job per day. Now, being a person that looks to the future, I realized that renting out gear every single day for every other shoot was not cost effective. Senzani, we bought another Ronin. That is bleeding money. Another instance where you're just gonna continue bleeding money the longer you stay in the industry is how your jobs are gonna start getting bigger. Bigger jobs mean more crew on set. More crew on set means more gear on set. And the list just keeps going on and on and on. Now, Imali just keeps flowing out. Another pandemic we have in this industry is how big agencies take so long to pay us, the smaller agencies. For instance, you might work today and get your money after 90 days with some agencies. Some of the good ones will work today and get your money after 30 days and so on and so forth. But it's very tough finding the ones that pay in 30 days or less. Those are just, they're rare. They're jewels, jewels of the industry. We love you. We appreciate you if you pay our invoices on time. Mafet, all of this should not discourage you from getting into the industry. However, you don't necessarily have to be a videographer to get into the game. You could become a colorist, you could become a sound designer, you could become a lighting person, a gaffer, you could become so many other things, just not a videographer. Because to be honest with you, the long hours are very long. Your back is gonna complain. And it's also very expensive. So in conclusion, don't let your lack of resources hold you back from getting into the industry or getting started with whatever you're most passionate about. If you're in Nanga, do it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And don't let my struggles with this industry discourage you from getting started with whatever you like the most. All right, so with that said, thank you so much for watching. 
don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already turn on post notifications so you know when the next video comes out also let's interact in the comment section down below tell me what you're most passionate about i'll hang out down there with you but for now i'll catch you guys on the next one dango oh we used to say sure sure